All right. So now we're going to get that differential equation. So I'm going to get it by doing um, basically a node voltage analysis of this problem. I've identified a reference node here. I'm going to do Kirchhoff's current law uh, at this node right here. I guess I'll, I'll label it node A so that there's a way I can show you I'm doing Kirchhoff's current law at node A. And believe me, this is so important for you to do on your final or even, you know, any kind of homework because otherwise nobody knows what, what you're doing. If you just come up with the equation and even if <coughs> it's right, sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out what you're doing. So tell me what you're doing. And so I'm telling you, I'm doing Kirchhoff's current law at node A. So what do I have? I've got, well certainly I've got this current here, I, leaving the node. And then I've got um, whatever this voltage is. And by the way, this is node A. But if I labeled it with a node voltage, it's V, right? That voltage is V because this branch with respect to the ground or the reference node is parallel to this voltage across the capacitor. So I could just label this, this, this is node A, but the node voltage of that is V. So, the current leaving that node is V minus Vs over 4. Is that 4 or 4K? No, it's just 4. Okay, so there's that current. And then the current leaving here is the current through the capacitor. Well, we know that the current through the capacitor is related to the voltage by that equation that looks like C dV dt. So there's the current here that I've labeled IC. It's just C dV dt. And C is 1 fourth. So I think I'll just show it as 1 fourth. OK. And that's it. That's Kirchhoff's current law at node A. All right. Um, Let's look at, okay, so now we need another, okay, so here's one equation in our two state variables, I and V. We need another equation in those same two state variables. So if you look at it, we could get it by doing Kirchhoff's current law at node B. Let's call this node B. Um, you know something? I don't want to do that because I just realized I'd be introducing another variable. It, we could do it, but it'll be simpler, actually, if we just look at this branch here and realize that the voltage across this branch is V. So basically, if, if, you know, in some ways, okay, in, it, it's just going to be quicker if I do a Kirchhoff's voltage law around the, what is that, the right mesh. Okay, so I guess let's go this way. So we'll have V plus V uh, minus 6I I, I made it hard on myself because the I is good. Let me, I'm going to go the other way. Okay, so I'm doing Kirchhoff's voltage law, but I just decided instead of going clockwise, I, I want to go counterclockwise just so that I'm in the same direction as I and it'll be easier mathematically. So I, um, well, uh, what's the voltage across that inductor? It's L D I D T, right? It's the voltage across the inductor plus 6I minus V is equal to zero. All right, so there's my second equation. I've got two equations in my two state variables, I and V. So what I want to do now is I basically want to eliminate one of the variables. So I've got two equations and two unknowns. These are two first order differential equations and the two unknowns. I'm going to eliminate one of the unknowns and I'm basically going to end up with one equation in one unknown, but it's going to be a second-order differential equation. 
So I'm going to use that S operator, just because I think it'll be good for you to, to see how that works. Um, so if I transform, uh, let's, uh, let's multiply, okay, so we're, we're going to, I'm going to be simplifying these equations and rewriting them. Okay, so I know that I need to get those later. Um, Okay, let's work on this one right here. If I multiply everything by 4, I can get rid of the 4 in the denominator. So I'm left with 4i plus v minus vs. I'm going to put the vs on the other side because I just want the variables on this side and then all the other terms on the other side. So I've got 4i plus v, I put the vs on the other side, and then I've got dv dt. And I'm going to show that as sv. Okay, so you have to remember what the s operator does. It's basically, this means dv dt. Okay? So it's, it's, the S operator is basically taking the first derivative of V with respect to T. So it's, a, it's, a tra it's called a transform. I don't want to go into the mathematical justification of it, but it's just you have a derivative with respect to time if you just basically take a, a term called S and multiply it by your variable, then basically it's the same as saying it's the first derivative of that variable. Okay, so um, so I've got so I, I transformed that equation to look like that. Here it's going to be a little bit easier. So I've got L S I plus six I minus V equals zero, and I'm going to erase this now because I, I basically took this equation and I got this equation, right? LSI plus 6i minus v. I need the room here. All right. And I need to, I need to rearrange things a little bit more because what I want, because basically now what I have are two equations and two unknowns. And I'm going to use Kramer's rule to solve for the unknowns. So if, if you're familiar with Kramer's rule, what you need to do is you need to kind of set up some columns. So I'm going to rewrite this equation here, and I'm going to put, put the distribute, or what do you call it? You know, distribute out the V, or factor out the V, anyway. So this is going to be, remember, this is 1 times V. So we've got 1 plus S times V. Okay, so, so what I'm trying to do is I've just got a coefficient times one unknown. Here's a coefficient times the other unknown. So for here, I want to combine Ls plus 6 times i. So see what I'm doing? I'm setting up some columns with my unknowns. Plus minus 1 times v. Oops, I forgot the other part of the equation. Okay, so now, so if you just set it up like that with the unknowns kind of lined up, and then the coefficients, you've got it set up to use Kramer's rule. So here's what Kramer's rule says. Pick one of the unknowns that you want to solve for. It doesn't matter which one. It could be i, could be v, but because I am looking for v, that's the one I'm going to choose. So Kramer's rule says that the unknown that you're looking for is going to be the ratio of two determinants. The determinant in the denominator is just going to be made up of the coefficients. Okay, so, that, so I just take that, take that. So there's that deter determinant. The determinant in the numerator is going to look almost like the determinant in the denominator. The only difference is that we're going to replace the column, which is the coefficients of the unknown I'm looking for, with what's on the other side of the equation. So that means I'm looking for v. This column here, I'm going to replace it with what I have on the other side of the equations. So, so here's what I've got. Oops. So here is the answer. Now I know it looks weird, 
It doesn't look like the answer yet, but there's my differential equation. It's a second order differential equation. It's only in the one unknown V. Okay, now, now I have to convince you that this really is a second order differential equation. But that's just the math, and I'm assuming you know how to deal with determinants. This is a really easy determinant. It's just a two by two. So we know that it's going to be this times this minus this times that, right? If you don't know that, you've got to go back and review your determinants. And then 4 times minus 1 gives me minus 4 minus this term, Ls plus 6 times 1 plus S. Okay, so you've got that. So now we've got V is equal to this kind of mess here. Let's multiply both sides. And by the way, in the book, they call this thing on the top P of S. You know, it's just some polynomial in S. And they call this one Q of S. So they're saying, okay, just multiply both sides by Q of S. And I think i got to take up this real estate here. So I'm just going to go from here up here. <coughs> if you multiply both sides by Q of S, then you've got minus 4 um, minus, you know, I think we're going to, let's multiply by negative 1. We can rid of the denominator. That way we can get rid of all these negative signs. Much better. So we've got 4 plus Ls plus 6 times 1 plus S times V is equal to Ls plus 6 times Vs. Okay, I'm, I'm only going to do the math on this side because it's really the same. Um, and so, just real quickly, Ls times V of S plus 6V of S. So now let's go back and put the S in terms of the derivative. This is dVs dt plus 6Vs. Okay? So that's what, this is the forcing function now of the differential equation. And then you can see, you know, if you do the math here, you're going to get end up with the term S squared, and you're going to end up with some term that looks like that. You know, the second derivative. So we're going to cut for a segment now, but I'm going to come back and show you that equation. And I'm not going to do the math.